President Cyril Ramaphosa has reacted to a threatening tweet by a ZANU-PF member, Tafadzwa Mugwadi. Uh, In the tweet, Mugwadi threatens to seek permission to reveal the real reason behind a visit by an ANC delegation to Zimbabwe last year. Ramaphosa was speaking with SABC News' political editor, Mzwandile Mbeje, earlier. We sent a delegation as the African National Congress to Zimbabwe because ZANU-PF is a sister uh, party to us. We have deep and strong links with ZANU-PF and it, it was one to f express concern, also to find out what's happening, to see the extent to which we can either be supportive and also fully understand precisely what is happening. So as far as we are concerned, there's nothing amiss. Uh, there's nothing uh, that uh, we could say we have to hide in as far as having sent that delegation. At government level, I appointed three envoys who went to Zimbabwe and uh, we continue to interact uh, with, uh, with Zimbabwe and I'm also in contact with President Munangagwa on an ongoing basis. So we're focusing on developments that could affect the relationship between South Africa and Zimbabwe. It's been reported that the Zimbabwean Director of Information and Publicity, uh, Tafadzwa Mogwadi, not only spoke about that delegation, uh, but also has accused the SABC's foreign editor, Sophie McQuenna, of being a notorious purveyor of fake news. Now, on the ground, yesterday, Zimbabwean officials arrested journalist Hopewell Chinono, who is well regarded internationally, also accusing him of spreading false information. He has been arrested three times over a period of six months over tweets that he says he's issued as a journalist concerned about the situation in Zimbabwe. This all comes as Zimbabwe entered a harder lockdown this week and queues have been forming on either side of the Bybridge border post between South Africa and Zimbabwe with officials blaming each other for the chaos. To discuss, we're joined by the executive chairperson of the Harare-based Southern African Political Economy Series trust. That's Professor Ibo Mandaza. Uh, Professor, thank you for being with us. Let's start with the censure of a South African journalist, my colleague Sophie McQuenna, uh, seemingly by a, a ranking uh, ZANU-PF official, the, the spokesperson essentially, a man called Tafadzwa Mugwadi. What can you tell us about him? Well, if it were not that uh, President Ramaphosa has already reacted to that tweet by Mugwadi, I will, I will attempt to dismiss it on two, for two reasons. The first is that he's not uh, the official spokesman of ZANU-PF. And it appears that uh, in the past he has, been, he has been censored by his own party and his, uh, his superiors for out-of-turn kind of reactions, such as the tweet reviews. But, but as I said earlier, it appears that this has become a, a potential diplomatic spat between the two countries. And uh, we hope that the government of Zimbabwe, uh, Nangago in particular, will respond and, and take the necessary steps to put in line. Uh, he's one of his officials, namely Mugwadi. Yeah. So, so you say he's been censured by his own party, not official, but I was looking at some online stories um, this week, one from ZimbabweMail.com. Uh, it says the source of that story is The Herald. Uh, I looked at his LinkedIn profile. Uh, everything is saying that he's the director of information and publicity. Um, so you're saying that there could be some uh, of his own peddling of, of false information there? Yeah, well, I, 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 I doubt that that is, reflects uh, the official position of ZANU-PF, uh, nor the official position of government. Uh, I'm not trying to defend uh, both, but I'm just saying that I find um, Gwadi's statement uh, tweet a, a bit strident and certainly out of sync with no more diplomatic relations between sister countries. And, uh, and as I said earlier, uh, it wait, it wait not that President Ramaphosa has already reacted, I would have dismissed it with the contempt that it deserves. Yeah. But now How? we have a situation where only, only Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwe government, and Nagago in particular, has to respond. Yeah. He has to respond to his part in South Africa, because this has become a serious matter now, clearly so. 
Indeed, and, and whatever the situation, uh, Zanu PF is is not clarifying whether he he's in good standing in the party or not, and and authorised to make such statements. Um, whoever is behind their real communications, not clearing anything up. Yeah, well, they have to. Now that uh, President Ramaphosa has spoken out, they have to respond. They have no choice but to respond, and I'm sure they will respond. If not publicly, they'll have to say something enough to to allay the concerns of a sister country and put to bed the what I, I think is, is is completely an unfortunate statement by a, a very junior official who does not reflect, in my view, the views of, of, of Zimbabwe on this matter. It's, as I said, it's a strident position by someone. It's provocative. And it's, it should be just in my view. Okay, so le let's just make this clear. As far as you know, he's not in good standing in the party, but he still is a ZANU PF official. Well, I, I don't know. I, I know that he was uh, in the at the Herald before, and then he moved to the party as a spokesman, and then he has been, albeit uh, downgraded to the position that he is. I just know uh, that he was in the in the delegation of ZANU PF that met with the the ANC counterparts uh, last year. But I also know that he's not held. He's not, he's not a senior official at all, neither in the party nor in government. All right, so we'll wait and see how this plays out. Hopewell Chinono, um, a, a journalist in Zimbabwe, also accused of releasing false information. Uh, th there's been some debate over whether a baby on a mother's back was beaten by authorities, um, whether it was alive or dead. Even if that baby didn't die, he, he's mostly a journalist re reporting on abuses. Um, he, he says it's because he's concerned, but he seems to be targeted uh, specifically in Zimbabwe. Would you agree? Yes, it is incredible that the authorities have continued to harass this man, notwithstanding very flimsy evidence. And the court proceedings this morning show that there might not even be a case against him. He simply echoed reports which had gone viral about an incident in which uh, police brutality had been reported and about which the police have been taken to task uh, over that incident and, may, and many others. So it's not new, uh, uh, these reports of police, police uh, excesses against the public. And uh, as I said, uh, the, the court reports show that the case is so flimsy and is likely to be dismissed uh, uh, on Monday. And, and, and you're right, it's, 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 in my view, it's sheer harassment uh, of, of Shimono. And I'm, I don't think it, 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 it uh, reflects very favorably on a state a government which has been seen as very uh, intolerant of criticism. And they tend to behave very excessively uh, and it in, and appears to target certain individuals in the society. Uh, it, 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 is, it is a it's very sad situation indeed. Do you believe the president, Emerson Manangagwa, um, is endorsing these efforts basically to uh, crush any dissent, crush, crush criticism of how Zimbabwean authorities are handling themselves? Is the hope of change in Zimbabwe um, under Emerson Manangagwa now, now in reality uh, a falsity, sh shown to be false hope? Well, I, I, my position on this is very clear. Uh, I've said as several times uh, and on SABC too that the coup of 2017 was a, a stage in the disintegration of this uh, secret state that Emerson Mangagwa has been part of for the last 30 years plus. And I don't see uh, Mangagwa being able to reform uh, the state, neither politically nor economically. It's going one way in my view. Uh, and the kind of uh, uh, excesses that you are seeing around uh, the harassment of journalists, 
the, the harassment of the opposition, the decimation of the opposition in parliament, and indeed even the the scenes at 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 at, at Bridge, which show and reflect a broken country, uh, an economy which has collapsed. All these are fair indications of a state in demise. Yeah. And there is no, there's no way, in my view, that uh, Mnangagwa and his government can turn the tide backwards. And I think the sooner the sooner the South Africans themselves uh, recognize that, acknowledge that, the better. Uh, instead of this piecemeal yeah. risk, uh, crisis situation in Zimbabwe. For example, uh, President Ramaphosa has just mentioned or reminded us of the, of, the, of, the, of the reasons why a delegation was sent to Zimbabwe last year. What has happened since? Have things changed so dramatically that the initiative has simply receded to the background? What is South Africa doing about the crisis in Zimbabwe? That is the question. Well, that was my question to you. What should South Africa be doing and saying? Uh, certainly efforts thus far uh, yielding no results. Um, uh, th th there's, there's the government um, track and then the ANC that, that went and visited. Uh, and now this, this claim uh, by uh, Mr. Maguadzi uh, that he could reveal the real reason behind the ANC delegation. Have you heard any speculation at all around that issue? <laughs> I think it's simply jeering at South Africa. Jeering because of the apparent uh, failure to sustain the initiative that began in August when the delegation was sent to Zimbabwe. It does, with respect, show a level of, of uh, confusion on the South African side. If, as President uh, Ramaphosa has reminded us, a delegation was sent in August to try and help Zimbabwe, to try and address the situation about which South Africa is an interested party, as, as, at least to the extent that South Africa has to have, have, have had to face the burden of the thousands of Zimbabweans who are flocking into South Africa. If that was the case in August, what is it that has caused South Africa to retreat and it is, it, is, it is the apparent retreat that Mugwari is, is, is jeering at. Uh, and, 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 and until and unless South Africa shows, as uh, Cyril Maposa has shown this evening in his, in his response to that tweet, unless South Africa has shown or demonstrates a level of resolve to deal as serious as it was in August, and that in the light of what has been happening recently, not, not, not with respect to the tweet, but the developments uh, the Bad Bridge and the extent to which that reflects a, a very serious economic crisis in Zimbabwe. So unless there's some kind of resolute action on the part of South Africa, uh, then people like Mugwari at the last laugh, regrettably. Well, well, the president speaking as ANC president yesterday said that the ANC must still have an Africa um, agenda, although he didn't mention Zimbabwe specifically, uh, but saying that we are committed to, to the continent. Talk uh, more about your thoughts around the Bight Bridge border that, that uh, keeps on coming up. Our Home Affairs Minister, Aaron Mitzwaledi, has spoken about the trucks uh, blocking traffic on this show uh, on the South African side. Reportedly, he also said there was not an automated system on Zimbabwe's side. Um, Zimbabwean reporting uh, saying that's not true. So, so now it seems like officials are, are blaming each other for the situation. Does that really threaten uh, relations between South Africa and Zimbabwe? Well, I think that Bright Bridge uh, scenario is is despicable. It reflects badly on South Africa itself, as I said uh, earlier. Uh, for South Africa to simply have allowed the thousands of Zimbabweans across the border uh, in the festive season without the requisite uh, uh, caution, uh, COVID test, and so on and so forth, I think it was reckless, it was cynical. And I think the Minister of Home Affairs of South Africa was trying to defend the ind indefensible. Clearly, they have a lot to answer for in that regard, especially given that we know, and the evidence is there, 
that the 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 virus uh, uh, has come mainly from from outside from South Africa into Zimbabwe, and we 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 and it is clear that the spike that is uh, escalating in Zimbabwe will will to a large extent be attributable to what happened at Bridge in the festive season. Yeah. That's what so but still Zimbabwe is more capable in this in this regard. In that there was on this, this side of the border none of the kind of quarantine arrangements that had been there several months before. There was there was nothing done uh, with respect to the many thousands of Zimbabwe who came across in the festive season. Uh, clearly, uh, Zimbabwe lacks a strategy vis-a-vis -vis the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, and uh, th thirdly, uh, the crisis at Bridge is a reflection of a broken country that Zimbabwe is at, at present. And then in the final analysis, it is Zimbabwe which must take the blame, yeah. uh, notwithstanding, notwithstanding the kind of uh, uh, mistakes and cynical actions taken by the Home Office in, in South Africa. Yeah. Well, let's end uh, with uh, Zimbabwe's latest move, the, the new lockdown. Um, Zimbabwe also grappling with health versus economic implications. Last time, uh, people were concerned that the majority of, of those economically active and formal traders uh, were shut down. Is it going to be like that, a wholesale shutdown once more with huge implications? Serious implications, clearly not thought out at all. Uh, we have, a, we have a, a joke in Zimbabwe where we, we, we refer to, to uh, Nangagwe as Ramakopa, meaning it's the tendency by the Zimbabwean government to copy whatever South Africa has done with regard to the COVID, COVID uh, pandemic. I did say that uh, our reaction as a country, um, our response to this pandemic has been haphazard uh, and uh, ill thought out. And clearly, the lockdown reflects the crisis. But I think that there should have been more, uh, more nuanced approach to the problem, especially to deal with a, a situation in which 95% of the economy is informal. And we have a situation where the whole country is shut down, almost like a military barrack. And it is ultimately the poor that is on the receiving end of this lockdown. Yeah. And we hope that in the coming days, uh, there will be a, a more thoughtful reflection of the implications of all this and a kind of um, more organized strategy, which will allow for the poor the vulnerable survive in this tumultuous situation. All right. Well, we appreciate your analysis tonight. Thank you very much. That was Professor Ibo Mandaza, Executive Chair of the Harare-based Southern African Political Trust Series, uh, Political Economy Series Trust, rather. We take a short break. Lots more to come.